you for prioritizing tonight's event and taking time off your very busy schedules to be here. Some of you flying from various miles to be here and mark this very special location. Welcome to the Regional Marine Time University Anniversary and Fundraising Dinner, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight will not only be a night of whining and dining to celebrate our illustrious institution, but also a night where we ask you to dig deep into your pockets and support a series of projects, initiatives, and anniversary activities earmarked to celebrate the Regional Maritime University at 65 years. This year, the Regional Maritime University, as we all know, has turned 65 years a long history of amazing, incredible, talented, and very illustrious Ghanaians and Africans have passed through this great institution. And tonight we celebrate what has been and what will be. We celebrate the history and we look forward to a new season, another 65 years of excellence from the Regional Marine Time University. But in all of this, we need your support, we need your help, to continue its mission of uh, providing comprehensive and liberal education and training to meet technological challenges within the maritime industry. And I'm pretty sure all of us will contribute to making that happen. But first and foremost, allow me to introduce myself. My name is AJ Akwako Sapon. I am a radio and TV personality at Media General, TV3 and 3FM to be specific. And I'm really, really glad and very honored to be your MC tonight. It will be a very lovely evening. We're going to certainly have a 3D experience. And no, it's not the 3D that will require any glasses. I'm talking dinner, dancing, and of course, we're going to be dining. Does that sound good? Some dinner, drinking, and dancing sounds good? Because I hope you brought your dancing shoes because we'll certainly get on the floor because the jamming band has promised us that beyond all the formalities, Beyond all the fundraising, yes. we're definitely going to be having a boogie time to celebrate what has been a very wonderful year. Um, and of course, the series of activities we've earmarked to ensure that everything comes to fruition, starting off with tonight. Now, before we get into anything, I'd like to, of course, acknowledge the exceptional, distinguished personality that have made time to be with us here. Some of us coming in from all over the African continent, and we truly appreciate you making time to be with us this evening. I'll start it off with our Chancellor, Board Chairman, and Minister of Transport, Works, and Infrastructure in the Republic of the Gambia. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Honorable Ibrahim Siha. Another round of applause for the Minister of Higher Education, Research, Science, and Technology in the Gambia. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Pierre Gomez. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being here, sir. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Next to Secretary General Mocha, Dr. Paul Adiluku. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being here, sir. Now, to the man we can officially call the host of tonight's evening, the Acting Vice Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jeffrey Brooks Jr. A round of applause for him. Thank you very much, sir. All protocols duly observed as we go through the evening. If I have detected to uh, mention and acknowledge your presence, kindly forgive me. I'll make sure it's rectified before the end of the evening. But a very big thank you, everyone, because all of you here are truly our VIPs. We cannot have this evening and this event without you. So thank you all for being here. So a round of applause for yourselves for being here this lovely evening. And a very big thank you as well to that. I now have the utmost pleasure of calling on the one who's been steering Regional Marine Time University to its continued success, ladies and gentlemen, a leader that rallies us all to our common goal. A round of applause for our Acting Vice Chancellor, Regional Marine Time University, Dr. Jethro Brooks Jr. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, as he comes and says a few words. Thank you. If you follow the journalist introducing you, you will stomp your toes. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. May I first of all recognize the presence of the Chancellor of the Board of Directors and the members of the Board of Directors of the Regional Maritime University. Our distinguished uh, members of the Committee of Experts of the Regional Maritime University. Our guests from um, BSM, our guests from um, Hafnia Shipping Line, 
our honorable um, guest speaker for this evening and our representatives from our local maritime uh, associations, industries and organizations. We are very much grateful as a university to have you here with us this evening. We are most grateful that you could join us to celebrate our 65th and our 40th anniversary. Normally we have this kind of dinner just after our board meeting, but this time around there are basic needs for us as a university and so we thought to have a fundraising dinner as the MC said. Two key things. We said for this fundraising dinner, it will help to support our scholarship program, especially the scholarship program for girls. And one of our major sponsors in terms of female scholarship for girls is the um, Ghana Shippers Authority. They have supported two ladies, they have graduated, they're working, and now they're going to support another one coming September. Am I correct? Thank you. So we ourselves, as an institution, the employees launched this scholarship program last year. And we are very much happy to ask you to join us to support this scholarship program to increase the number of female participation in the maritime industry. Besides that, the university have other pressing needs. And we are very much grateful to inform you that several other infrastructure development activities can be undertaken at the university to help accommodate some of the expansion we are doing in terms of uh, personal activities and trying to reach out to the industry. This year, we're not just sitting down, we're reaching out. We're not waiting for them to come to us, we're going to them. And that is why we have very, very, very much in normal activities with the maritime sector of Ghana and in most of our member states. So let me just cut it short because myself, I'm hungry since this money. So I uh, thank you for listening and welcome again. Short and sweet, we love to see you. Thank you very much for that, sir. As well, allow me to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Arnott Stefan. Forgive me if I may have stumbled over that. Deputy Director HR Marine of BSM, thank you very much for being here, sir. <laughs> Truly appreciate your presence. Thank you for taking time to be here. I shall now move on to share a few words. A remarkable, dedicated, and very determined group of individuals have ensured that they spend the last few hours, days, months to ensure that they plan out every little detail of this anniversary. Celebrating 65 and 40 years is no small feat and is taking a lot of passion, a lot of hard work, a lot of, uh, I'm sure, boardroom conversations and, and debates and fights to ensure that all the many activities planned for the anniversary comes off without a hitch. Now, to help me speak on all of these activities and more, allow me to call on the anniversary planning chair, Dr. George Van Dyke. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. As I was walking here, allow me to stand on existing protocols. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today, as we gather to celebrate the 65th anniversary of the Regional Maritime University, it is with great honor and pleasure that I take you on a journey through the remarkable history and achievements of this iconic institution. The inception of Regional Maritime University can be traced back to a pivotal moment in Ghana's history, shortly after gaining independence. Recognizing the economic significance of maritime activities, the government of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, our first president, took visionary steps to establish the Black Star Line. This venture aimed not only to ensure smooth, economic growth, but also to transfer technology and provide employment opportunities for our citizens. The Black Star Line's success hinged on two crucial factors, owning and operating merchant ships and training skilled seafarers to man these ships with a strong commitment to Africanization. In pursuit of this vision, the Ghana Nautical College was born in 1958. At its inception, the Ghana Nautical College commenced its journey at the premises of a primary school on Independence Avenue, adjacent to the Flagstaff House, which is now known as the Jubilee House, and that is Ghana's current seat of government. 
With a pioneering spirit, the college embarked on the training of 20 deck and 20 engine room ratings, laying the foundation for the development of skilled maritime personnel in our nation. Recognizing the increased demand for well-trained maritime officers, a decision was made in 1960 to elevate the college's curriculum to include officer cadet training. A technical team led by Dr. R.P. Bafo recommended a strategic location of the college to a site that would offer both proximity to the bustling Tamahabo and the advantage of a nearby water body, the Mukwe Lagoon. Embracing this vision, the Regional Maritime University, as we know it today, found its home in this new location. In 1961, the university welcomed its first batch of 25 cadets who embarked on the rigorous officers course. So moving from 1961 to 1983, a decision was taken to expand the horizons of the Ghana Nautical College and transform it into the Regional Maritime Academy under the guidance of MOCA. This transformation marked a turning point in the institution's history elevating its role beyond the borders of Ghana and embracing a broader regional approach. The Regional Maritime Academy sought to promote collaboration and mutual cooperation among West African nations in the maritime domain. The expansion of the Academy's mandate to meet the growing demand for skilled maritime personnel across the entire West African sub-region. With this bold move towards regionalization, the Academy opened its doors to students from neighboring countries, fostering a diverse and inclusive learning environment. The collaborative efforts and exchange of knowledge among students from different nations laid the foundation for a strong regional maritime community. Building upon its successful regionalization, the Regional Maritime Academy achieved another milestone in its journey in 2007 the attainment of full university status. This transformation marked a moment of immense pride for all stakeholders, signifying RMU's evolution into a fully-fledged institution of higher learning. The elevation to university status was a testament to the unwavering commitment of RMU to academic excellence, research, and the provision of cutting-edge maritime education. With its new status, the university expanded its academic offerings, including specialized degree programs and advanced research initiatives, catering to the diverse needs of the maritime industry. As a full-fledged university, RMU gained international recognition and solidified its position as a premier maritime institution, attracting students and faculty from across Africa. The university's reputation as a center of excellence in maritime education and research continued to grow, and its graduates became sought after professionals in the maritime industry worldwide. Over the past 65 years, RMU has achieved numerous milestones, fostering regional cooperation and making significant contributions to the growth of the maritime industry in Africa. As we celebrate this momentous occasion, let us reflect on the countless success stories, the dedication of our faculty and staff, and the hard work of our students. Together we have shaped RMU into an institution that continues to make a positive impact on Africa's maritime landscape. As we honor our past, we also embrace the future with enthusiasm and determination. The Regional Maritime University's journey has just begun and we remain committed to fostering excellence, empowering our communities and shaping the maritime leaders of tomorrow. Thank you for being part of this cele celebration and here's to many more years of success for RMU. Thank you so much, Doc. Here is truly to many more success of RMU. Without wasting much time, I'll quickly move on to a very important highlight of tonight's event. 
Mm-hmm. When I think of this particular lady, um, a quote by William Shakespeare comes into mind. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. And this particular lady has and truly was born great through her achievement, has achieved greatness. And when greatness was thrust upon her, did it with joy, elegance, and a lot of success. She has over 40 years of experience in the maritime industry, including roles in management, consultancy, academia, international civil service, amongst many others. She's a part of pioneering class of African women at sea. She went on to become the first African woman to qualify as a master marina, that is, captain of a merchant navy ship. She's been a dock officer on a ship, uh, on an ocean-going vessel, the Black Line Star, for four years, a senior lecturer at Regional Maritime University for nine years, has been an expert and training advisor to the Bangladesh government for two years, International Maritime Organization Regional Coordinator for West and Central Africa for six years. She's played a role as a project director, supports to the promotion of employment in the marine time industry, United Nations Development Program, UNDP, for six years, and is currently a consultant on marine time safety and security. To give our key note address, ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for Captain Georgina Jovab. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Make it louder, make it louder, make it louder. Let it be heard from Sierra Leone. Let it be heard from Gambia. Ladies and gentlemen, make it louder for the captain herself. I did it. I did it. Let's try. Let's carry it out a little. Let's me this far. So that we I thank all of you in this industry. Uh, having been called to give uh, the keynote address, I'll probably start by doing all the pleasantries that we usually do by starting with saying ladies and gentlemen esteemed guests distinguished delegates these are all the things that we usually say when we start good evening and thank you for joining us tonight as we celebrate a remarkable milestone in the history these are all the things that we say but being serious i say as an alumni and a former member of staff, it is a great, great honor to stand before you today and address the importance of maritime education and the profound impact this institution has had since its inception. First and foremost, I want to express my gratitude to all the visionaries who laid the foundation of this esteemed institution 65 years ago. How old was I? Probably two years old. No. And somebody then had that vision and laid the down to bring this up for all of us to be it. Their foresight and determination have created an institution that has become a beacon of excellence in maritime education not only in Ghana, but across the entire region. Maritime education is of utmost importance as it plays a vital role in shaping the future of our maritime industry and indeed the overall national economy. The potential for training our youth to be deployed in the global shipping is something that could be a game changer in job creation and wealth revenue generation to support our nation's development. (laughs) Our oceans cover more than 70% of the earth's surface and as a crucial source of resources, transportation and renewable energy. As the saying goes, or the adage goes, those who conquer the sea, conquer the world. Therefore, the need for well-trained maritime professionals cannot be overstated. The Regional Maritime University has been instrumental in equipping individuals with the knowledge, skills, competency, and expertise 
necessary to navigate the challenges and harness the opportunities presented by the maritime sector. Since its establishment, the Regional Maritime University has remained committed to providing high quality education and training to thousands of students from Ghana and other member states. Its comprehensive curriculum covers a wide range of disciplines, including, not, but not limited, maritime law, marine engineering, port and shipping management, and maritime safety and security. This holistic approach ensures that our graduates are not only knowledgeable, but also well-rounded professionals ready to excel in their chosen fields. The impact of the Regional Maritime University extends far beyond the borders of our beloved Ghana. Its alumni can be found in leadership positions in various maritime organizations, both locally and internationally. They have become ambassadors of excellence, driving progress, and making significant contributions to the sustainable development of the maritime industry. Moreover, the Regional Maritime University has played a crucial role in fostering regional cooperation and integration through collaborative research projects, training programs, and knowledge sharing initiatives, the university has brought together maritime professionals from different countries, promoting dialogue, understanding, and the exchange of best practices. This collective effort has not only strengthened the bonds between member states, but also enhanced the overall resilience and capacity of our region to address maritime challenges. Tonight, as we commemorate the 65th anniversary of this regional maritime university, we celebrate the achievements and contributions of this remarkable institution. We pay tribute to the generations of students, faculty members, and staff who have made it their mission to promote excellence, innovation, and sustainability in the maritime sector. As we look to the future, let us remember that the maritime industry is evolving as an, at an unprecedented pace. The challenges we face, such as climate change, tech advancements, and geopolitical shifts, require us to adapt and embrace new ways of thinking. The Regional Maritime University must therefore continue to be at the forefront of these changes, leading the way in research, education, and policy development. Ladies and gentlemen, and all who are here, this is the case. Before I can conclude, I would like to draw our attention to the significant importance of the fundraising efforts we are undertaking tonight. As we celebrate the 65th anniversary of the university, we also acknowledge the pressing need to invest in its future development and support the aspiration of deserving students through scholarships. The maritime industry is evolving rapidly. And to remain at the forefront of this dynamic sector, the university must continually update its infrastructure, invest in cutting edge technologies, and expand its research capabilities. The funds raised tonight will contribute directly, and I want them to say that again, we will contribute directly to these efforts, ensuring that the Regional Maritime University continues to promote 
state-of-the-art facilities and resources that foster innovation and excellence. Furthermore, scholarships play a crucial role in empowering talented individuals who may face financial constraints but possess the potential to make significant contributions to the industry. By supporting scholarships, we not only enable deserving students to pursue their dreams, but also we create a diverse and inclusive environment that harnesses the talents and perspectives of individuals from various backgrounds. These scholarships will be catalysts for transforming lives and nurturing the next generation of maritime leaders who will carry the touch of excellence and drive progress in our industry. I urge each and every one here to wholeheartedly participate in this fundraising efforts tonight. Your contributions, whether big or small, will have a lasting impact on the regional maritime investment is students in the future of the maritime industry. Together, we can shape a future where maritime education knows no financial barriers, where talent is nurtured, and where innovation thrives. Thank you for your generosity, because I already know some people have, uh, companies have already started. Support and commitment to the future development of our dear regional maritime university and the empowerment of maritime students through scholarships. Let us unite in this noble cause and ensure that the legacy of this institution continues to flourish for posterity and generations to come. Thank you once again, and may we all embark on a journey of progress, knowledge, and compassion. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you very much. As she rightly said, let us all begin on a journey of compassion and of progress. A truly remarkable word from an inspirational woman. A round of applause again, ladies and gentlemen, for Captain Georgina Jopa. And like she rightly said, tonight we encourage you all, because I'm pretty sure all of us seated here at one point or the other got to our, our destination, so our, our, our peak. We encourage you all that be that someone for someone coming up, be that person, be that agent of change, be that opportunity that a young gentleman or a young lady needs to progress in their journey towards maritime excellence. So
Distinguished as we have been working, the Chancellor and Chairman of both of the Rectors of the Regional Maritime University, Honorable Ibrahim Silla. Welcome, sir. Good morning, sir. Behind you. Behind you. I look up for me too. Come let me know there. I'll be for that. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you so much, Madam Chair. Your voice is very familiar. I mean, uh, I think uh, when I was in Ghana, I used to hear you on radio. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us uh, on this phone race. Actually, when I was coming, I never knew that I was going to make a speech. I thought we were going to feast on the benevolence of the RMU, and later we sent the bill to the uh, acting vice chancellor. But now that I am given the opportunity to say a few words and to kickstart the phone racer, let me say that... Um, we are very happy to be here with you and thank you so much uh, 
the wonderful hotel for that uh, very good meal. I say if you come to Ghana and uh, you did not eat uh, banku or fufu, yet you are not yet introduced to Ghana. And uh, some of my colleagues here, who of course are from uh, the West Africa region, have never tested some of these foods. So I encourage you to have a very fond memory of Ghana through the wonderful traditional foods that we have here. I took banku and goat soup, and it was extremely very nice. Now, as you know, right now we have quite a number of uh, young boys and girls at the university who want to pursue much higher education in maritime engineering, port management, and a whole lot of things within the value chain. But unfortunately, we have quite a lot of our students who are from diverse backgrounds, some of whom are not able to, you know, directly afford the school fees. And we have to say that our courses and the costs attached to them are very competitive. But yet, because of the situation of uh, a number of our students from various diverse family backgrounds, they are still struggling. So I want to start with ourselves. The Board of Governors of uh, the RMU, the ministers from Ghana, Sierra Leone, Cameroon, the Gambia, and Liberia. I know some of you are representing the substantive ministers who are not able to make it to this year's Board of Governors meeting because of uh, prior commitments. But I want to pledge on behalf of all the ministers. We, we, can we start with Sierra Leone? Not $1,000, not $1,500, not $2,000, and not $2,500. It starts from $3,000 for every minister. Let me hear from you, this Minister of Sierra Leone. I am pledging $3,000 for the RMU. And I want to speak on behalf of all ministers from now against November. Please come to the podium. From now against November, when we have our next Board of Governors meeting in the Gambia, we want to see the 3,000 on the table. So five countries, 3,000 is already $15,000 in the back. Honorable Minister, $3,000 as a starting fee. Representing Liberia, come on the table, please. Come on the podium. Representing Cameroon. Come to the podium. And representing Ghana. I'm so honorable as my... Oh, he... Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, the, the, the honorable minister has left because there is a presidential commission that uh, he is part of and they are having their inaugural meeting today. But I'm so Ghana will pledge $6,000. And the director of the maritime and all the technical group members here, I'm sure with uh, $300, $200 added to the $3,000, we'll make $6,000 for Ghana. But I can tell you, Gambia is already pledging $3,000. Sierra Leone, $5,000. Liberia? On behalf of my minister and the representative who is in this post right now because our vice president is in the country in Ghana visiting as well and will be at the program I pledge the amount of $5,000 for Liberia Okay, thank you very much to acknowledge that <laughs> the Cameroon can give $4,000 This is great, and then we can safely say Ghana 6,000. Going by our size, we are the smallest. The Gambia is the smallest with a population of just 2.3 million people. So we are project, I mean, pledging 3,000, but personally, I'm also putting 2,000 on top to make it 5,000. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we are doing this, just to show you that um, 
the regional maritime university is very dear to us, is very important to us. As you know right now, the entire world is uh, working very hard to maximally benefit from the blue economy. But where is the trained personnel to help governments have the needs policies to enhance this important economic process? Of course, is the real regional maritime university. This year, the acting vice chancellor and the management had a very good international workshop where they invited thematic experts who contributed immensely to enriching the course format on blue and green economy. And therefore, as governments, as ministers responsible for this university, we are very much committed to supporting the management to ensure that it meets its I mean, uh, obligations to the students. We know that we have very talented young people in our region who otherwise would have been marine engineers if it were not for the problems and also the diverse backgrounds that they come from and they are not able to be in this university. So therefore, pledging this little amount of money will go a long way in supporting at least a number of young students, a number of young people who have uh, finished the senior secondary school and are looking forward to opportunities like this. And we will uh, continue to encourage our governments, our ministers of finance to support this regional university. Currently, in Africa alone, we need up to 400,000 young people to be on merchant vessels. But the opportunity to provide that type of uh, manpower and the deficit that we have on our merchant vessels is not there because the training institutions are few. Therefore, supporting the regional maritime university to fill that gap is a critical support initiative that we should all continue to embrace. I therefore thank all of you and I encourage experts that are here, also our bilateral partners, our business partners, to pledge and support the initiative of the Regional Maritime University. Thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, make it louder. Our distinguished gentlemen have truly set the mark on what is going to be a wonderful, wonderful point in tonight's event. We were hoping for 15, these gentlemen have gone up and beyond that to give us $25,000 as a means of contributing um, to scholarships for brilliant students amongst many other initiatives. Now at this particular point in time, as our gentlemen, our kind honorable gentlemen have set us off, we shall get straight into our auction part and bidding and as well fundraising part of tonight's evening. So before anything at all, and I'm pretty sure there's a point that people start looking at their food, bidding uh, opportunities available. So we have our space opportunities, we have our projects, we have our renovation projects, and then we finally have our landscaping transformation. So our full our scholarship project is in three parts. We have our full scholarship for a brilliant student. This scholarship will empower brilliant students with the opportunity to pursue their academic passions while carrying your name, your organization's name, forever. This is 6,000 US dollars for a named scholarship. So with this, it can be fully funded. Perhaps Mr. A and Madam B would want to have a named scholarship at RMU. This will cost 6,000. However, a group of individuals, friends, family, um, members of the same organization, or the organization in itself, can choose to name a scholarship and share it, and it's $6,000. As well, we will have some renovation projects that we'll be hoping you'll be helping us embark on, including a classroom renovation, 
which will involve renovating a designated classroom, providing modern amenities such as interactive smart boards, ergonomic seating, and advanced audiovisual equipment to enhance the learning experience of our students. And this will cost $20,000 per classroom. As well, you can also have the workshop enhancement, which is contributed to the upgrade of a workshop with cutting edge machinery, tools, and safety features, ensuring students gain valuable practical skills and hands-on experience. And this will cost $30,000 per workshop. And finally, last but certainly not the least, our environment needs to beautify or reflect the beauty that we consume in our classrooms. That's why we're hoping you can help us embark on a landscape transformation. This will be where we'll be transforming the university's landscape into a green, sustainable, and aesthetically pleasing environment that fosters a sense of pride and well-being among students and staff. This will cost $10,000 for a designated area on campus. Now we say um, this famous quote by Professor Craig Gregory that says, when you educate a man, you educate an individual, but when you educate a woman, you educate a whole nation. Who went to my I school, old school, secondary college? So I'm going to secondary college, finest science girl, who wants to go to see and sponsor her? Ladies and gentlemen, make it louder. This is truly amazing. A young lady in second D is about to be gifted with a golden opportunity courtesy our keynote speaker. That is absolutely amazing. Yes, please, sir. Sir. Thank you very much. You know, uh, I really knew is an organ of Mocha. I was just telling Yes, the Mar MUCA is a maritime organization for Western Central Africa, and RMU is an organ of MUCA. I'm saying that we, we established the school, we gave it fit, it's working, and my distinguished chairman and chancellor made a personal donation and a pledge, personal uh, contribution of $2,000. On behalf of Mocha itself, I'll pledge another three thousand dollars, making it five thousand. Thank you so much, sir. Five thousand dollars, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. Absolutely outstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, any more takers for our three thousand dollar bid? Any more takers, ladies and gentlemen? Now, at this point, I will move on to another part, our named scholarship, hopefully for our organizations here this evening. This will lead your name on a scholarship. By creating a named scholarship, you leave a lasting legacy at RMU, whether you're company A or company B, for the next many years, Students who pass the war haven't accomplished what they need to because you, either the individual or the company, has created a named scholarship that they can benefit from. So to our groups, to our individuals, and as well to our companies, any takers for our named scholarship, creating a lasting legacy, keeping yourself your company alive for years to come. Every time a young student is able to uh, get access to the scholarship, whether for whatever bills that they may need, your name shall forever be inked in the walls of RMU because you've taken this initiative. Do we have any takers for our name scholarship, ladies and gentlemen? Companies, individuals, members of the audience, any takers? <laughs> At this point, ladies and gentlemen, if you know that you're sitting by someone who is very capable of doing a betrayal, as I said earlier, it's allowed. You are allowed to just sort of poke your way around or say, hmm, I think this nice gentleman or this nice lady are, are very capable of doing it. They're just a little shy to be to raise their hands. But if you are shy and you don't want to 
put yourself out there. We have our lovely ladies as well going around. Oh, we have a At this point, if you wish to your hand, I, I see a hand up, or oh, is it me? <laughs> So any takers, ladies and gentlemen, on our named scholarship? Any takers? Then I shall move on to our renovation projects. So for our renovation projects, ladies and gentlemen, we're asking that you help us renovate a classroom. A beautiful classroom catering for many students that will pass from the walls of RMU. We're asking that you dig deep and pull out $20,000. A sum that seems huge, but when you think about the impact it will make for years to come, when that classroom is fitted with the state-of-the-art equipment that they need to be able to move on and be at par with other institutions across the world, you would know it's a pretty penny to give and it'll be worth a whole lot more. Ladies and gentlemen, we're asking for you to help us renovate a classroom. At this point in time, we have our lovely ladies as well going around offering our pledge documents. So in case you don't want to just make too much of a fuss, but you're very happy to Give silently, we'll be more than happy to acknowledge you anonymously, but thank you all the same. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like uh, to now call on representatives of BSM to make a short remark. Hey. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Very honored to be here today. It is uh, a pleasure to be for the first time in Ghana. Uh, my company, <coughs> Banner Furniture Management, is present in this uh, great country for the last 10 years. Uh, we have uh, 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 a full service center here in which we are, we are taking credit from the RMU, a significant number per year, and uh, we will do so uh, also in Kuka. We are currently building up the uh, Maritime Training Center next to the RMU in order to train our cadets and the also for future uh, for the future services on board of uh, our vessels. When I'm looking at uh, Ghana and the African future, we see the great future uh, ahead of them because the condition, the um, the ability of African people on board of our vessels are quite good, and uh, we will see also in future that we will increase our pool uh, in Ghana and uh, from other countries here in Africa considerably over the next year. So we um, expect that we that Africa, African people, will become similar to other main seafaring nations in uh, Asia or in India, and we, we are sure that uh, we will be here for a very considerable period of time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. We truly appreciate it. Okay. Now, at this point in time, I'm going to move on to another exciting part of it, an auction. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to present to you some very, very exclusive items. Now, we have, after a very long search, which involved traveling all the way to Israel and having it shipped back, some exclusive pictures that will be auctioned this evening. Taken by Israeli officers, it is four original pictures of our four or first four Black Star Line ships taken in 1963. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a piece of history that you could be walking away home with this evening for a very good course.
So our ships involve uh, the four pictures or our four very exclusive, very sought after pictures are they are called the OT River, the Nasia River, the Orfin River, and the Tano River. And tonight they are all on auction and hoping that you will take them home and the proceeds will generate. You can see this piece of history that you can get to experience, that you can place on your mantle of honor in your homes or in your offices. As men and women in the maritime industry, this is really South Africa. Taken in 1963, they represent Ghana, our Navy excellence. They represent dreams. They represent individuals that took on these pictures, truly represent that and a whole lot more. So again, going around, we have the Oti River, the Nasir River, the Ophi River, and the Tano River. Those are the names of our beautiful works, truly of art, I would say, because photography is art. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, representing the Kakoyama continent from Denmark, excited to have a rep say a few words, and we shall go very shortly into our bidding, hopefully, a bidding war of our beautiful works of art. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, speaking, Captain Javalana. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for your warmest welcome uh, with me here in Ghana. And... Um, I'm very happy, and of course, on behalf of Hapnia, um, we extend our appreciation and congratulations. Happy 65th anniversary to RMU. And I'm proudly to announce that uh, Hapnia um, has officially signed the Memorandum of Understanding amongst us between the Marlin Marine here, who is our uh, Horizon crew agent here in Ghana and African area and also with the RMU, or the Regional Maritime University, that we are sponsoring 16 cadets uh, annually, minimum 16 cadets every year. And I'm proud to say that we have currently 16 women seafarers who are already on board our vessels. So for the next 16 to come after the graduations, we're gonna prepare them to send them on board our ships and also we are recognizing the achievers of every year that those who made um, remarkable achievements every year and give them an opportunity to sail on board our vessels and of course recognizing uh, the instructors as well. So all it will be sponsored by Hafnia and to be able to uh, give them an opportunity to sail on board our vessels. So on top of that, uh, we are very excited in Hapnia to, um, to continue to have uh, good relationships amongst us and to see the progress of our cadets and to have more projects uh, here in RMU. That's all. Thank you. So we have a bit of a 3,500 uh, and uh, are we into this 4,000? <laughs> are we? 3, so 3,005, we're moving on to 4,000 Ghana cities. Somebody said 4,000. I had 4,000 somewhere. Any hands up? <laughs> no takers? 
if you scratch your head, I'll consider it a bit a gentleman in the corner. If you say 4,000, you'll be 4,500. 4,500, ladies and gentlemen. 4,500. 4,500 going once. 4,500 going twice. So, for our distinguished gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause. Some history to hand. So history to hand in your home, in your office. Now we'll move on to our next one for the Nassio Award. Own a piece of history. Chairman is taking that, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so we are down to our final one. Down to our final one. A thin river. Our final piece of history, the of thin river. Now you truly want to own this. This will be one of four ever taken, ever existing in the world. There's no other. There's no other. There's no extra. This. Hey! In your places. Richard, come and join them. Help me move it. 4,500. To own something produced in 1963. 4,500. And ladies and gentlemen, our amazing ladies taking it at 4,500. Thank you so much, ma'am. We truly appreciate it. And it's a remarkable like, timeline. I mean, 65 and 40, all in the same year. We're asking that you be so kind. Development of our classrooms, the beautification of our spaces, and most importantly, going towards the refurbishment of our workshops and ensuring that we get students coming through, especially our wonderful female students to add up to our numbers. At this particular point in time, I'll bring to an end our fundraising aspect, officially, but unofficially, our forms are still going around. So if you can, a round of applause to all our amazing donors tonight, the companies, the individuals, and of course, the organizations that have ensured that we have reached a nice landmark this evening in terms of our fundraising. But a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause. If you're not giving, you're clapping, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not giving, you're clapping. Thank you all. Our distinguished table of gentlemen, of fine gentlemen, of our honorable gentlemen for starting us off right and as well for leading us through the charge till this point. At this particular point, I will call back on Dr. Van Dyke. To come to the dinner and most importantly for donating generously. Thank you very much. Let me also thank the keynote speaker, Madam Captain for your wonderful words, and not only the words, but your pledge to sponsor um, a student. We are so grateful. Um, I wish to also thank the representative from BS and Hafnia for coming. The members of the experts committee from the various countries are also here. Thank you very much for coming. And you are still free to also donate if you want to donate to the scholarship. Um, let me thank all other guests from the various organizations that are here, the staff of RMU, and lastly, the committee that was put up for this scholarship. Um, Dr. Van Dyke and your team, thank you very much for a wonderful job. Um, we pray that all the pledges received will go towards the scholarships that are identified, and we hope and pray that there will be more pledges even well beyond this dinner, especially for some of these, um, some of those that have attended this program. Overall, I, I would say thank you very much, the band that played, 
all those that prepared the food. Madam MC, let me also do the thank you for you for, for, for everything you have said to and then have you know for everything you've said to be able to get all the pledges. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.